Welcome back, everyone. Uh, here we've got a 1915 upgrade on a 1898 pocket watch. Yeah, we can see they've uh, put red numbers, 24-hour scale on the face of it. Um, it is uh, Roman numerals, which means that it is in the late 1800s. Sorry about that crude camera work. Uh, but uh, you can see in the beautiful silver case, um, 875. So on in the interior, you can see is just stunning. It looks like they've got an add-on plate to these three wheels, uh, making this a stopwatch. Um, I'll know more when I go into this, but a lot of times what they did is they took a pocket watch that they made already and they modified it to make it a stopwatch for the war. We'll be seeing if that was this way. It could just be that it was an 1898 pocket watch that they modified the dial on. You can see the three gears here, the carrier gears, all have a lot of grease and oil on them. Let me zoom in here. You can see the black faces of those three gears right there. Uh, wheels, if you will. Um, but uh, that is just a combination of uh, oil and crushed bronze. That is really just uh, very, very gunked up. So uh, we'll be taking care of that. We'll be cleaning all that. And uh, you can see it's a beautiful yin-yang pattern with the uh, chrome and the brass there. Really nice. I do like that. That's why I bought this is because that movement is just so beautiful. All right, let's get that face and the hands off the dial and the hands off of the other side. And we'll start taking apart this movement. Uh, the hands and the dial on this are a stopwatch, which means I could pull them off by pushing on the center. But uh, I'm going to pry these because I've uh, got a suspicion that they're going to come off a little easier than if I tried to pull them off. There it is, there's the seconds hand, there's the minute hand, there's the hour hand, and the second seconds hand right here. My favorite trick of <clears throat> moving this uh, guard around the seconds hand until I can move a blade under it, it comes right off. Again, putting no pressure on the ceramic face. That is cracked, but it is beautiful. All right, so there should be a case screw back here, right there. And if we turn that case screw halfway, that should release the movement out of the case. I have, there it is right there. Oh, it wants to, so bad. Oh, there it is. There it is, okay. So that's the movement out of the case. <coughs> And uh, you can see uh, it all is in really good condition. I don't see any problems with that. And uh, <clears throat> so that is the dial. And that should just separate very easily from the case. those two dial screws so that the crescents are right over the posts and that allows it to just come right off it should just fall off <clears throat> do not pry these um, that one looks in great condition <clears throat> looks like an original um, it looks like this watch does have a serial number, and <clears throat> excuse me, we will get to see if it is a complete watch or whether it's a Franken watch. I think this was a, just a neglected watch. Somebody tried to oil it, and uh, those pieces right there and there.
so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of these really, really dirty carrier wheels and clean it and see if I can even move the dirt. I, I'm just hoping it's not corrosion. Usually it's not corrosion, but I have no idea what somebody put in there. So I'm going to take that spring off, the retention spring first. You can see there's a number of springs on this. There's actually 10 to be exact. And I pulled that carrier wheel and you can see there's the before. A lot of brass, but a lot of black on that. There's a curtain of smudge around the edge of the gear face. Um, and then I'll show you in a second right here is the clean, and that's just one cleaning. Um, and you can see that that is going to clean beautifully. So I know as we go into this, uh, this movement is going to clean up real well, work perfectly, and we're going to have a running 1890s stopwatch, if it wasn't later. And you can see <clears throat> that it has gotten much cleaner. All right, now one of the reasons that I do <clears throat> try and spend money on gear is because you do wind up buying the best. And these are Bergeon levers. And the I like them because they have a very low angle so you can get under gears like that. See that low angle on the face? You almost have to be lying down to get them to activate so very good for pulling all kinds of gears and you can see this one again has just got all kinds of debris impacted into the gear face and uh, now we can examine the rest of the movement and uh, check it out and make sure that all the jewels are good it was running so I expect everything to be there and be good but you can never tell all right, so the next thing I want to do after checking everything out is to take this balance off. And, uh, yeah, let's, let's see if I can get that in focus. This new camera. It's very clear, but uh, the focal plane is very short. So I'm, I'm working on it. Sorry. Sorry if it's a little fuzzy. But uh, there's the balance screw right there. And we'll see if this has been worked on in a long time by how this balance cock comes off. Alright, that's good. Okay. So, that's it's always tricky taking off the balance. Oh my god, it's always tense. Alright. It's always one of the most tense moments. I wouldn't have my finger anywhere near this if I wasn't cleaning it. But, uh, oh, okay. There it comes. And it took a longer second than I thought. I just am taking my time with this because it's my first time taking this apart. And I do not want to drop it or to hurt it in any way. You can see my thumb being there allowed me to catch that as it came apart. <clears throat> okay, now we can work on this center wheel bridge, which is the third of those really gummed up wheels. Yeah. Alright, that, sh that should just come off the pivot. Hmm. Alright, so let's take, try and take the whole thing apart. I think that it's stuck. Oh, there it is. Alright, so that comes off easily, and then that center wheel comes out like that. And that's the center wheel that's the seconds wheel, and that was one of the wheels that they put in when they retrofit this. That went all the way through the movement, and that very tip right there connected to the seconds wheel of the stopwatch. So... All right, so let's move on to taking off these springs, and there's like six of them, seven of them. So we'll just go through and take off what seems logical. This will be spring number one, and I'll keep all of the screws with the spring as I take it apart, because it looks like these are all custom fit. 
That'll be number number two right there. And that looks like it's the ratchet wheel spring right there. And then uh, spring spring number three right there is the ratchet wheel click. I don't even know if these are the right names, but these are what it seems to be doing. <clears throat> that spring with that screw. And then we've got uh, a couple more. That's going to be this spring, and this is the actuator spring for the ratchet. And that ratchet is, there it is right there. That, there's the claw to that that fits into the ratchet. We have a, one more spring here, and I think that that one is the spring. Hold on there. That, oh, this is so frustrating. Some of these are so skinny, these screws. You gotta have a very, very, very well sharpened screwdriver to get into these movements. And that was the spring for the actuator. So, yeah. And then, this isn't a spring as much as it's a lifting bar for the center wheel to keep it in the same plane as the other two wheels, the carrying wheel and the drive wheel. So that's all of this on this main plate. Um, now I can take off that ratchet wheel um, and it looks like the ratchet can come off too, the, the click that's right above it. Alright, oh that comes off easily. Nice, good, all this will clean. Looks like that's got oil underneath it. All of it does, it hasn't been clean in a long time, but the oil hasn't turned to glue yet. All right, so uh, I think I've got three screws here. One, two, oh, there it is, and three right there. so small. Alright, it's getting late. It's time to stop for the evening here. I'll take this plate off. Let's see what we can find under it. Yeah, it looks like this plate was machined and fit. There it is. Machined and fit. Just to fit on this pocket watch frame. You can see the fitting marks on the back of the plate and the serial number right there matches the front, which means that the bridge and the main plate are the same manufacturer, which is good. And you can see the, the filing marks in the back of that. I have a feeling that they fit the screws to it and then filed the back of it so that it would fit down there like that. All right, let's keep going here. Um, we've got a good head start on it. What does that say in there? So it looks like there's a lot of black gunk on everything, but it looks like there's an inscription of some kind. What does that say? Charles Briard Basil 1915. So this was, my guess is this was retrofit in 1915 in Switzerland where they manufactured the watch, um, which would put it right in the middle of the war, World War One, which would make sense that the military demarcation on the front that was added to the Roman numeral dial um, would be there when they added the second hand feature and had this retrofit for the war. Would be my guess. But uh, we do know 1915 Basel, Switzerland, Charles Briard worked on this watch down at this level um, and that the plate and the main plate and everything go together. So we'll take off this bridge that holds the third and fourth wheels. Um, 
And that, there it is, that fourth wheel, you can't really see it, has a really, really long pin to it right there. So I've got to be very careful in taking this bridge off that I don't bend that pin, which would be somewhat unfortunate if I did, but I know I can. Yeah, I know I can do this this way easily if I just lift it off square to the There it is right there Okay, that's the that's the third wheel Should come off. Let's get a picture of that first. I always like photographing these things before we move on and that's going to be the third. Oh, there's a little bit of power still in that. And then the fourth with the extra long pivot. And that holds the carrying wheel for the seconds hand. You can see that's covered with schmutz. Sorry, that's out of focus. I'm just learning how to use this camera. It's a new, there we go. Thank you. Um, uh, but it's a much better camera for this detail work because you can zoom in on it and it, I think it's 4k it's really really nice so yeah that's uh that's another element that gets cleaned and then we've got the two bridges left and this main gear right there that goes all the way through um, but first let's take this plate off let's see if it'll move at all for okay good <clears throat> it's not good 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 okay we can unscrew this Making sure there's no no place it's hanging up. <clears throat> I relax these screws a little bit and then pry it up. It's a new movement to me, so I don't go zooming through. There might be a spring in there somewhere. I don't know. So I always take these new movements apart very carefully. You can't see it's a little off camera, but I'm taking the reset lever off because that screw also holds this bridge on. And so now I've got everything cleared off. I can take this bridge off. Oops, see? Still power in that. Isn't that amazing? This will run so much better when I'm finished cleaning it. It'll be great to show you that. And you got to stick around for that because the cleaned up version of this is a jewel box there's no other way to put that well there it is that's not out of character for the swatch it's filthy um there's the winding gear and there's the main barrel and there's the center wheel and so uh, we'll pull that pull that gear out in the mainspring uh, and the mainspring barrel and then we'll turn it over and pull off the cannon pinion, which is holding that center wheel on. So uh, there's the winding gear. Put that aside, covered in grease. It's sticking to my tweezers. Pull off the main barrel. And the spring, main spring. Oh, God, that looks clean. That looks super clean. I'll open that off camera, take care of it, deal with it. And then this.